What's up everybody, this is Cakes and welcome back to another shorter tutorial. Originally I planned on making an entire OpenGL tutorial, but it turns out as part of that tutorial I need to load and save files and on top of that I need to manage memory. And I felt like that would just pollute the OpenGL part and make it way too long and way too convoluted and therefore I extracted this part out and we will deal with this before we actually get into OpenGL, which will be tomorrow. For sure. So this is where we switch over to the schnitzel lib file and below the logger, I would like to create the bump allocator first and then below that section, I want to do file i slash o. And the bump allocator is a simple struct. Then it has a size t of capacity, then a size t of used bytes. And then lastly, character pointer to the memory. The first function we want to create is a bump allocator, make underscore bump underscore allocator. And the only thing that it takes in is a size t of the size of the one that we want to allocate. We're going to create a bump allocator on the stack, ba, initialize that to zero. Then we set ba dot capacity to the size, but only if we manage to actually allocate memory. So we want to set the ba dot used to a malloc. And now we don't have malloc, which means we have to include something from the C standard library. So we'll go up to the top. And in order to get malloc, we have to include stdlib.h. But we also need to get another thing. This is to get memset. So we do an include string.h. And then if we go back down here, malloc should exist. And it takes in obviously a size. And then the only thing that is complaining is that it is a void pointer and we're actually using a character pointer here. So we are going to cast the result to a character pointer. And now I just noticed that I'm assigning it to the used and not to the memory. I don't know why I put that on used. Obviously you want to assign this to the memory. And then we want to check if we actually managed to get back memory. And if not, then we want to do an sm assert with false failed to allocate memory. And so we only set the size really if we manage to allocate memory. And then we return the BA, the bump allocator. Now before we actually return it, we want to make sure that our memory, I would like to do that, you don't have to, is zeroed out. So basically you want to do a mem set of our memory to zero based on the size that we allocated. So that's how we can make one. Now we need a function to allocate memory from the bump allocator. We have a character pointer and we call that bump underscore alloc. That takes in a bump allocator pointer and then a size underscore t with however much we want to allocate. So the first thing we create here is a result and we initialize that to null pointer and below we return that result. Only this time we have to make sure that size t, our size, is aligned correctly. So we need to create a variable on the stack that's called aligned size. And so we need to take the size, then plus that with 7, then add that together with not 7, which will basically make sure that the first four bits are going to be set to 0. And since the first four bits are zero, that means that we align this with 16. You can look at the calculator and then see if the first four bits are zero, the next bit after that is 16. And then we need to make sure if the bump allocator used bytes plus the align size are still less than the bump allocator capacity. And then if that is correct, then we set the result to the bump allocator memory plus the bump allocator used. Since malloc returns us an aligned memory already, or an aligned, a pointer that is already aligned properly, then if we only allocate aligned sizes, the result of this will also be an aligned size, a properly aligned size. And then after that, we do a bump allocator used plus equals the aligned size. Now, if we are not able to do that, and I like to put this in here, always we can do an sm assert and this is how we can allocate memory the file io is something that we put into the schnitzel lib we have already created the section and this is heavily reliant on the bump allocator and so i'm going to post in the functions because i don't think it has any educational value if i just write in the code they are all relying on the bump allocator and so it is easier to explain that than to type it out. So this is going to be a lot. First of all, we need to add an inclusion in order to get timestamps of a file. So head to the very top of schnitzel lib, include sys slash stat.h. So this gives us the timestamp of the file. And the way we do that, we create this struct stat on the stack. And then we call the stat function, which then fills in the struct. And after that, we return the m time this is the time in milliseconds when the file was created and we need that later so that whenever we load in our texture which is uh, in a couple of tutorials from now we can check the timestamp of when the texture was last changed and if that timestamp is newer we can then reload the texture into the renderer 
basically propagating the changes from the texture to the game and we always have an updated sprite sheet which is very powerful we don't have to close the game and then reload the texture and do a bunch of work it's all done by us now the file exists we are using f open to check and to load files i think it's the most easy and straightforward library to use that is supplied to us by the standard library and the reason why i'm using it over let's say windows file io is because we want to have access to this on every single operating system and since the standard library already offers us a way of opening files on all the different devices i don't want to put in the work of actually having to implement file io on every single operating system and so yeah we are calling in f open to open a file path here then we check if it exists if not we return false and if it does we close the file again and then return true very simple function to check whether a file exists to get the file size we take in a file path obviously we always assert whether we have actually supplied a file path or not this is to catch errors during development and then we define a file size on the stack we open the file check whether it actually exists if not we toss an error and return zero and then we seek to the end we call ftl to see how big the file is and then we seek to the very beginning again and close the file and of course at the very end we return the file size now this is where it gets interesting reading a file this reads a file into a supplied buffer and we manage our own memory and therefore we want to control over where it is allocated i think this type of interface is not used enough in libraries that are open because oftentimes, maybe you want to control where the memory is being allocated when, for example, you have a JSON parser and then it just says pass JSON. And uh, all you can do is supply a file path and you're not able to supply a buffer yourself. And so, yeah, which means that our read file function takes in the file path, a pointer to the file size, which is going to get written by the function, and then a pointer to a buffer to use. And then obviously we do the assertions here to check whether we have supplied anything. And we could also do another assertion on the buffer, no buffer supplied. And then we do the traditional way of opening files using fopen. We call f open. We set the file size to zero. We read in binary. If we don't have a file, we return null pointer and we toss an error. And then we seek to the end. We tell the file size. We seek to the very beginning. And now you don't have to do this actually, but this is just for me to null terminate the file. Files by themselves should already be null terminated as far as I know. I could be wrong on this, uh, but you don't have to do this plus one. I just put in a plus one here to make sure that it's now terminated i don't think you need to do that and you can correct me in the comments if i'm wrong and so yeah then we call f read we write into the buffer using the size of a character this is basically how much is the size of each element in the file and then we supply in the size of the file and obviously the handle to the file after we are done reading we close the file and return the buffer and so i want to skip over the write file real quick here actually this should be ordered a little bit better in my opinion Let's put the write file below read file. This is the second read file, uh, which builds on the first read file. So basically, you remember the bump allocator, right? We have the same interface with file path and file size, only this time we take in a bump allocator. Actually, I'm changing this to null pointer. This must have been like an old thing. So first we define our file that we're going to read as a null pointer. Then we get the size of the file. Then after that, we know the size. We are going to bump allocate from our bump allocator and if we are able to do that then we just call read file using this buffer and we assign that to the file and then return the file so basically this builds up on the previous read file function that we have defined and that's why i'm not coding this right now it's easier to explain this than to code all of that because you will be like wondering why why is he doing it this way and i think it's more confusing uh, than helpful all right and then we go, go over to write file uh, this takes in a file path and a buffer and a size we are searching on both of those and then we just do a simple f open which is write binary we check if we can open the file and then we write to it using our supplied buffer this is the element size again size of character however many bytes we want to write and then the file handle and after that we obviously close the file again okay and over here this is needed for later but i'm already putting it in here just so it is complete this copy file is going to be used when we are loading the game as a dynamically loaded library and we'll get to that later but essentially it is almost the same interface as the read file as you can see it 
takes in a buffer, a file name and an output name. And so we start by reading the file using the buffer. We get the data from it and the file size. And then we try to open the output file. If we are unable to do that, we toss an error and return false. If we are able to do it, then we are going to write from our file into the output file using the size of the file. And then obviously we're going to close the output file. Now that's a little bit much. I know that. Uh, and you might be overwhelmed. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I'll gladly help you. Let's cover the last function here, which is copy file using the bump allocator. But it's basically the same thing. No, we're going to get the file size of the source file. If we manage to get that, then we bump allocate from the bump allocator. And then we just call copy file, which again, you know, it builds up on the previous function. And so that is why we have the bump allocator here, because that allows us to basically supply any memory if we want to those functions and we don't need to call new or malloc every time we call them because i'm a huge fan of managing your own memory because then you actually know what's going on and re reusing the same memory makes your program faster if you don't make big mistakes which obviously you can't do with this system if you keep an eye out it shouldn't be a big problem and this is everything that you need to know about file io and allocating memory and then again tomorrow we will focus on opengl and i will show you how to initialize it and load it and then draw a triangle or let's say a quad to the screen until then i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did leave a like and subscribe for more until then see you tomorrow peace tomorrow for sure.